Hello again everyone, this is Her Crabbiness and I've come back from the dead after three or four months. And today we are going to play the Dagger of Amun-Ra with some special people, Late Blight and Zwobot Jones. Hello. Hi. Awesome. Yep. Another, uh, another Sierra game, sequel to The Colonel's Bequest. Uh, it's my favorite game ever. Alright, so let's start with this introduction. Some very scary music. That's a magnificent introduction. Yeah. It's on a ship. And they're sailing. And fun times. Are they sailing? There's no but sails on a ship or on well, that ship. They're they're going through the water. They're they're floating, but are they is that technically sailing if there are no sails on the vessel? I don't know. I'm a gamer. I know, but you you want to make sure your facts are correct also. Alright. So now if this is inside of the big ship. Uh oh. Oh my run! Run! Oh no! And um, rather than chuck him overboard, just stuff him in a trunk. And don't worry about it. But you know, this is in the 20s. Yeah, we can still chuck him overboard. But um, don't forget, he would have, uh, would have to go on deck first. Uh, somebody yeah. nice him. That's true. Well, he could have just pretended he had some luggage in the trunk that he wanted to get rid of. Alright, so here we go. They're, uh, they've landed. It's a huge ass ship. But, uh, okay. It's a close up of. No, no, it's, it's a big bottom ship. Okay, fine. The time to correct the most grievous misunderstanding, Mr. Carter. The Dagger of Amandra must be returned to Egypt. Stay out of my way, or I'll thrash you within an inch of your life. It's actually supposed to be British, but we don't feel like being British today. I'm, I'm not very good with British. Yeah, me neither. Surely we can find a way to accommodate everybody's wishes. Who are you to tell me what I can do with my own property? You, property? What authority do you have? The authority of the Egyptian Antiquities Service. So if you don't like it, I suggest you waddle on back to Egypt and complain to your own government. Would, you not, would it not be better to work this out diplomatically? This isn't a case for diplomacy, it's a case for your acceptance of the situation. No. It is not just my acceptance the issue, Mr. Carter. Frankly, some of our people are quite upset. Move to take drastic measures if need be. Are you threatening me, you malodorous little man? Mr. Carter, there are some who would rather fight back than allow the country to be stripped of its national treasures. Any fat savage who lays a finger on my exhibit or threatens me will find himself in deep trouble. Do I make myself clear? It's clear you want of the U.S., Mr. Carter. Alright, I think that's the end of the conversation. The guy on the left is Dr. Patasha Tut Smith, and the guy on the right, who just vanished away, is Dr. Pippin Carter. So remember those people, because they will be important later on in the game. And I get to voice the really, uh, the really jerky guy. Alright, now here we have two more characters. We have a stevedore, and we have some random gentlemen. We have that team of a man. It's exceedingly valuable. It sure is heavy, Mr. Carrington. Have you got gold bars in here or something? The contents of my trunk are not your concern. Now, be a good lad and take it to my taxi. The Countess is waiting. Alright, the guy on the right is Steve Dorian. The Steve Ador, it's a pun on... Ah, ah. <laughs> The guy on the left he is, is Dr. Carrington. Nice. Yes. He has a bow tie. Oh, does he? Wait, which guy? Yeah. Steve? Yeah. Oh, I didn't notice. See, he's got like the brightest red hair ever. New Orleans, one week later. Are you sure you've got everything? Yes, Daddy. You've got Sam's address at the paper? Yes, Daddy. You've got the money I gave you? 
Yes, Daddy, don't worry. Put some money in your shoe. New York's a big city and there's a lot of crime there. Look, I'm going straight to the paper. What could possibly go wrong? Let me give you a little more money just in case. Dad, I've got to go. Godspeed, Laura. Call me as soon as you get there. I'll be fine, Dad. I'm going to make you proud of me. I already am, honey. Oh, I was sweet. They're hugging. And she walks away. Yeah, it makes sense. She's just walking through New York. New York. <laughs> you know what? I just go with you now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I still want to know, why is Roberta Williams listed as a creative consultant here in the credits, though? Did she not write the game? I don't know. I'm so curious. But, um, yep, credits. Good opportunity for credits. This is excitement at its finest. I mean, you, I just... I'm, I'm enthralled by this thr thrilling credit sequence with that train. I know. The train trains. has almost gotten off the left edge of the screen. I mean, that train's going it? by is just... It's the little train that could. It scrolled all the way off the screen. That That is just excitement. Excuse me, dear. Are you a secretary? Actually, I'm starting a job as a reporter for the New York Daily Register News Tribune. My name is Laura Bow. How nice! I'm Ermgard. Is this your first trip to the big city? Am I that obvious? How could you tell? By the way you keep glancing out the window, dear, I did just the same thing the first time I came to New York. The tall buildings, the people rushing around, it was all so exciting. Then I stepped off the train and got mugged. How awful. It's a New York experience. She sounded a lot different in my LP. <laughs> <laughs> well, you voiced her as a man. <laughs> Thank you, dear. You're very kind. I've enjoyed traveling with you. And she gets mugged. <clears throat> Do you need any help getting home? No, dear. I'll be fine. Thank you. You're sure you'll be okay? Yes, thank you. Goodbye. <gasps> Goodness gracious. My suitcase. Can you spare thine, Miss? Certainly, sir. I'm always ready to help those who are less fortunate. Well, that's just peachy. Give me all your money, then. Excuse me? I don't know. This seems very unfair. Welcome to New York, kid. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> 